Now KBYP chasing the mystery problem in a Drake TR4C. Totally restored. Happy and ready to go. <laughs> Happy and ready to go. Except no transmit on 10 meters. Final stage is good. Works on 15. The load control doesn't act quite right on the lower bands. Uh, the plate and load should be a 5 and 3 on 40, and it was 5 and 2 or 5 and 5 or something. A little bit odd. But if the drive is off, it's going to change the plate and load. I aligned it on 10. I aligned it on 15. I neutralized it on 15. I adjusted neutralizing capacitor every place it can be adjusted on 10. I uh, took off the improper capacitor. I put a made capacitor. I found a setting where it appeared to neutralize on 10, just no power output, 5 or 10 watts. Found resistors in the driver circuit, the PA driver, that had changed value a bit. Screen resistor and the plate resistor were off a bit, so I replaced them, but that can't cause that. But the, give, the giveaway was that it wouldn't make power on 10 until low control was turned all the way towards zero, which is full mesh. And then that's the wrong direction. It's supposed to start at zero and make more power as it's turned counterclockwise or opened up for less capacitance, which suggested there wasn't enough capacitance. Well, a lot worse than that, because there's the hole where I took the load capacitor out. It's broke. <clears throat> and this is a problem, a job, and a repair that has a butt puckering factor of 9.6 because this is the one part in this whole radio you don't want to work on. Hose this up, transmitter's finished. You can uh, <clears throat> go to Cardwell, I think they're still around, and you can pay $400 for that, but uh, you just wrote off the radio unless you really like it. Of course, I spent almost a thousand bucks for crystals to uh, to rebuild the sideband filters in a TR, the TR3 and this TR4. See, this has a new filter in it. But what had happened <clears throat> is that this cheaply made capacitor, I think it's a Johnson, right down in here where those holes are, those plates with the terminals, those terminals Ring terminals are where the wires from the band switch connect on to change the capacitance for different bands. And the stator plates at the bottom. There's the rotor. Rotor there. The stator is the rectangular looking set. And the, and the, the stator is a rectangular looking set. The rotor is a set up here that's curved and moves. So stator is stationary. The stator plates are held in by a solder joint to that silver looking plate which is clamped around that uh, phenolic thing and clamped in the base and the solder joints had broken an extremely fine line across both of them so that section this section there's the front there's the back that section is the only one connected for 10 meters and that was open <clears throat> that's not the worst thing that can happen if um, these connections on this load capacitor break under full power. It happened in the TR3. It destroyed destroyed that plate inductor on that ceramic. It blew five turns out of it <clears throat> because when the load capacitor was turned to about there, there was a dead spot where it had been used on 20 meters a lot. So turn that back and forth over the years in one small area, it makes wear and things get loose. And the grounding had gotten loose and the capacitor just instantaneously opened up and caused a tremendous reflected energy. <clears throat> and that was five or six KV reflected back into the plates of the finals. So the way to do this job it's not extremely difficult, but you've got to be extremely careful because the goal is to clean those solder joints, clean the whole capacitor with um, uh, acetone. <coughs> Pardon me, acetone. I've been in the solvent. 
but clean it thoroughly. Clean it with spray cleaner. Dry it thoroughly. Avoid water. Clean the grease out of the bearing. But go along and look at the mesh of the plates. They should be pretty much even spacing and even gap across all of them. And if you got reasonably good eyesight, you'll be able to look at it and see if it's symmetrical. But the goal is to reheat flux and reheat and add some solder to those solder joints without this stator assembly moving because the only thing holding that in position what's holding these stator pieces in alignment is that solder joint to there to the brown to that so the thing to do is do one solder joint at a time of course you can't do two soldering gun the soldering gun tip will just fit right in that gap heat it on on high flow some solder in <clears throat> and you may see this this uh, stator assembly jump a little bit to keep that from happening take some uh, printer paper tear off strips fold them over nice and flat and stick them in between the plates on each side all four corners so it can't jump out of alignment but if that gets out of alignment and those plates short you're in big trouble after that's done go along and look for symmetry even spacing this is real nice but occasionally a plate is off if a plate is tipped a little bit you can open this up and very very gently very, very gently these can be pushed or pulled either side with very light force from your thumbnail. And uh, they can be just coaxed to go back into position. Uh, don't bend these. These are for band spread adjustment in receivers, mostly for oscillators. That's another, uh, another miserable operation to try to set that. But those are what are bent to correct for, for tuning band spread across a dial. That was a thing in old receivers. So once that's done, it's got to be a new ground system put on the rotor shaft because these old grounds are no longer any good. So once that's all done, then it's got to sit here overnight with the, um, that's a segment that was open. But, um, capacitor meter set it there let it sit overnight don't touch it because it the, the one in the tr3 could just let it sit there and suddenly for no apparent reason it would open up the meter would suddenly go to overload so there's how to save save the radio literally that capacitor is gone the radio is junk so mystery solved and this this is one of the few things that has fooled me I didn't know what was causing it and I have never had to do this repair so it was a little bit of fear and trembling but uh, it's an expensive part to wreck so be very careful KBYP out